right. So what shutdown rule looks at is should a business continue to produce if they are taking a loss? Um, meaning that their costs are greater than their revenues, they're losing money, but there's a specific point to where it is more cost effective to produce nothing than it is to continue to produce and take a loss. And so that's what shutdown rule refers to. It should the firm continue to produce nothing. So example being says assume a firm produces 10 units and sells each of them for $10 a piece. Their average total cost is $15, their average variable cost is $8. So total revenue, remember revenue is the total amount of money they bring in, which would be $100. They sell 10 units for $10 a piece, $100 of total revenue. Total cost, we do 15 times 10. There's an average cost for each one of the 10 units of $15. So the total cost is $150. The total variable cost would be $80. How much is your fixed cost? 70. Good. Yeah. Remember, fixed plus variable gives you total. So we've got a fixed cost of $70. Whether they produce anything or not, they have to pay that $70 fixed cost. Is the firm taking a profit or a loss? Wait, how did you get the fixed cost? Uh, basically, total cost minus variable. Oh. But fixed plus variable gives you total, so you can just rearrange it oh, okay. to kind of work back and forth. Okay. So, if we have $150 total cost and only $100 of revenue, is the firm taking a profit or a loss? Probably a loss. Well, a loss. loss. Because we're only bringing in $100, we're having to pay out $150. So the firm is taking a $50 loss. So, we got to decide. All right, we're losing money. Should we shut down the business or not? Or should we continue to produce in the short run, because we're going to talk about later on, that firms are going to enter and exit and just because we're taking a loss right now doesn't necessarily mean we're going to lose money in the future. It just means currently we're losing some money, but sometimes if a firm will stick it out and stay in the market, they'll eventually earn a profit later on because some businesses are going to leave the market. When those businesses leave, it lessens the competition. If there's less competition, each firm that's stuck around will eventually earn a profit in theory. But we know we have a $50 loss. So the way shutdown rule works, if the loss, well, ultimately you have to compare the loss to the variable cost. Remember, variable cost is your production cost. Fixed cost is what you're going to have to pay anyway. Or sorry, I said that backwards. You've got to compare the loss to the fixed cost. So we would say even though the firm takes a $50 loss, they're going to continue to produce because if we continue to produce, we only lose that $50. If we shut down, we still have to pay that fixed cost no matter what. So if we shut down, we lose $70. If we continue to produce, we only lose $50. So we would say the firm should continue to produce, even though they're losing money. All right, another example. It says assume the firm produces 20 units and sells each of them. That's a typo, it should be four, $8 each. Their ATC is $15 and their average variable cost is 10. So total revenue, total amount of money they bring in, they sell 20 units for $8 a piece, $160 of total revenue. How much is total cost? There you go, $300, because an average total cost of 15 for each of the 20 units, we have $300 of total cost. Variable is 200, 20 units times 10, so what's our fixed? 100. 100, because 200 plus 100 gives you 300. Is the firm taking a loss? Yes. Yes. How much? 140. Good. $140. So now, we're losing $140. We assume, well, we'll say a month. Each month we're losing this $140. If we shut down completely, we've still got to pay our fixed cost, but fixed cost is only $100. It is more cost effective to shut the business down and still pay the fixed cost than it is to continue to produce. Because if we try to stick it out and continue to produce, we're going to lose $140. If we just shut it down completely and don't produce anything, we're only going to lose $100. So basically, if your profit, or no, if your loss is greater than your fixed cost, you're going to shut down? Yeah. Okay. Do you take into consideration that you're going to have to pay all this back with the profit? If you don't actually profit, do you pay back? Because if you do this like 20 times, and then you start making a profit half that much, it's going to be two times that you're back and you're still not profit. I didn't understand what you just said. Well, you're losing money, so you had to eventually pay that money back. And 
So your profit is going to go straight into that. So you're not even profiting. Got everything. I don't think that. So in the real world, world I mean, in the real world, world, yeah, it becomes more complicated. That if you're constantly shutting your business down, obviously there's some pretty big issues <laughs> with the business. You might consider other options, <laughs> but um, remember, it's all concept and theory. Okay. Don't don't think about it too much, but because you'll just grab it a whole lot of too much. Um, but ultimately, yes, shutdown rule, comparing fixed costs to the loss of what you would have to pay. Um, so, shutdown rule on a graph though, you're looking for the ABC, the average variable cost, which is below the ATC curve. And so I'll show you this again. I know you don't remember it very great from before spring break. We'll refresh all this. But it says when the price falls below the average variable cost, then the firm should minimize losses by shutting down. If the revenue, or essentially the, we'll see all this in the graph, if M articles MC is above that ABC, the firm is going to continue to produce even though they're going to take a loss. Because it's shutting down and producing nothing is better than producing and having a larger loss. So, you remember our curves. We've got the marginal cost, it's always going to go down, and that's going to go back up. It's the check mark or the Nike swoosh. You've got average total cost in blue, average variable cost in green. Remember, average total cost is always going to be above the average variable cost. Marginal cost intersected those curves at its minimum point. Um, so all that sound familiar? Remember all that vaguely? Yeah. From yeah. over a week ago. Okay. That intersection of intersection. Section. Intersection. Intersection. Section. That's yeah. the word I'm looking for. Yeah. You can tell I hadn't been in school for a week either. I forgot English. Intersection. <laughs> yeah, I forgot English. Ah. That point right there. Eventually, we're going to have a horizontal curve that goes straight through the, through the graph that represents the price, the marginal revenue. It also represents the demand and the average revenue. We get to that when we get to perfect competition. But if that horizontal curve is below that point where marginal cost intercepts average variable cost, that's your shutdown point. So that's what we refer to shutdown. Um, of course, if it's above the ATC, the firm's earning a profit. If it's in between, that's where the firm's going to continue to produce at a loss. And if it is below that point, the firm's going to shut down because it's more cost effective to produce nothing. So P1 represents the price. Um, like I said, eventually that's going to be price, demand, marginal revenue, and average revenue. The curve's going to essentially stand for four different things. But it is below that point right there. So we would say the firm should shut down. If Actually, I think it shows me. Yeah, this is the one I want. So 10 and 15, the firm's going to shut down. At 20-ish right there, they're going to continue to produce even though they're taking a loss. And so if it's in between, they're going to continue to produce. Because as long as this black curve right there is below the ATC, the firm's taking some kind of loss. If it gets up here at like 35 and it's above, then the firm's earning a profit. And ultimately, we're going to be looking for that point right there, that where marginal cost and marginal revenue are essentially priced right now. That point's what we're going to be looking for on the graph because you're only going to have one of these curves when we get up to it. This is just essentially showing you five different hypothetical stages of the firm, but you're only going to have one horizontal curve. And so wherever that intersection of marginal revenue and marginal cost is, that's how you would make the determination. Because here it's below, there it's essentially equal, but the firm would still shut down. Um, and a lot of times they're going to give you the numbers to justify that as well. There it's in between. Um, we'll talk about that point a lot where they actually all come together. It's what we call long run equilibrium. But essentially there the firm's breaking even because Revenue is equal to their cost. If anything above, the firm's earning a profit, and they're definitely going to produce if they're earning a profit. But um, if that point is below average variable cost, the firm is going to shut down. Um, as price increases, uh, quantity produced increases. So something else they're going to throw out there is that the marginal cost curve above the average variable cost curve. Remember. 
anything below this point, the firms shut down. They're not producing. And so they only produce from there to there. And so we refer to the marginal cost curve above the ABC as the short run supply curve for the firm. The way it works, if your variable cost increase, well, let's go back. We know, go back to taxes. We talk about taxes and how it's going to essentially cost the firm more money to produce the product and therefore it shifted the supply curve to the left. Same thing happens here, that if there's a per unit tax or an excise tax, it's going to increase the variable cost of production. And so when it increases the variable cost of production, it's also going to shift that marginal cost curve to the left. And so it operates just like a supply curve, because it's going to essentially shift it to the left on the graph. Because remember, marginal cost is going to intersect ABC at that minimum point. And so it's always going to have that relationship. And so if your variable cost increase, it shifts marginal cost to the left, it operates as a short run supply curve for the firm. If variable costs were to decrease, such as a subsidy, it would increase supply. But just the way it just happily works out on the graph, it shifts that marginal cost curve to the right, just as a supply curve would. And so an example of how they would present this on the test says the short run supply curve the firm in a perfectly competitive industry. We haven't got to perfect competition yet, but essentially that's what these graphs are leading into. But you would say it's marginal cost curve above the minimum point of the ABC. And so they don't do a ton with that. They just want you to kind of understand that relationship. That marginal cost above the ABC is referred to as a short run supply curve. But if you can understand the relationship between marginal cost and variable cost, and why when the variable cost increases, it shifts marginal cost to the left, when variable cost decreases, it shifts marginal cost to the right, then you're better off. But as long as you can at least identify marginal cost above ABC as short run supply, usually that's all you need. So one thing we'll see with perfect competition too is that firms are going to enter and exit into these markets very easily. Um, perfect competition has the lowest barriers to entry and exit, meaning firms can enter and exit into these markets very easily. Um, we'll talk a lot about agricultural products being perfectly competitive, meaning that you know if you want to enter into the market selling tomatoes, we'll grow some tomatoes, go to the farm market and sell your tomatoes. You are actively participating in that market. Very easy to enter in and exit. If you want to sell corn, well, put your own tomatoes, go sell corn. Uh, if you left the tomato market, you entered the corn market. So, I've got barriers to entry, that's what we're talking about. If firms are currently earning a profit, new firms are going to enter into the market. If firms are currently taking a loss, firms are going to exit the market. We're going to talk a lot more about this, but essentially, Firms, businesses, whatever you want to call it, they're going to chase profits. So it says a sumo firm produces 10 units and sells each of them for $200 a piece. It tells us there's $2,000 total revenue. If their average total cost is 120, we know the total cost is going to be $1,200. Therefore, it gives us $800 of profit. In the long run, new firms are going to enter into that market because they want some of that profit. If the firm is taking a loss, some firms are going to enter. What's going to happen is eventually the firms are going to break even in the long run. And so we'll talk about that when we get to the graphs. But for right now, just know firms are going to chase profits. They're going to enter into the market where people are earning money. Before I talk about barriers to entry, it's just how hard is it for a firm to enter and exit into a market. And this is purely for entertainment. And that's the end of the lecture. Thank <laughs> you.